Hi everyone, it's Megan. So one of the things that I thought of doing for some of our devotional um, podcasts that we put on, and I'm sorry this one's a bit long, I hope it's worth it, um, is read a book, specifically some Dr. Seuss. Now, I saw on Instagram that Save the Children in the US has a new Instagram account uh, called Save with Reading or By Reading. I'll definitely put that in the description later. But the point of it is they have celebrities who read stories, children's stories, for the sake of raising awareness for saving the children. So I thought, why don't we read a book instead? Um, maybe we could do a children's book. And, you know, I'm partial to some Dr. Seuss. I love this book. Bought it when I was pregnant with Tommy. So excited to read Dr. Seuss again. What I love about Dr. Seuss is even though his stories like the one I'll read today, Horton Hatches an Egg, is from the 1940s, it's still applicable today and has some great nuggets of wisdom in there. So what I'll do is I will read this story, show the pictures, obviously, so you don't just look at me reading something, and then I'll ask some questions at the end that you can ask yourself as a family and discuss. So. Here we go. As I said, this is called Horton Hatches an Egg. Let's see. All right. Sighed Maisie, a lazy bird hatching an egg. I'm tired and I'm bored and I've kinks in my leg. From sitting, just sitting here day after day, it's work. How I hate it. I much rather play. I like a vacation, fly off for a rest. If I could find someone to stay in my nest. If I could find someone, I'd fly away free. Then Horton, the elephant, passed by her tree. Hello, called the lazy bird, smiling her best. You've nothing to do, and I do need a rest. Would you like to sit on the egg in my nest? The elephant laughed. Why, of all silly things, I haven't feathers and I haven't wings me on your egg? Why, that doesn't make sense. Your egg is so small, ma'am, and I'm so immense. Tut, tut, answered Maisie. I know you're not small, but I'm sure you can do it. No trouble at all. Just sit on it softly. You're gentle and kind. Come, be a good fellow. I know you won't mind. Well, I can't, said the elephant. Please, begged the bird. I won't be gone long, sir. I give you my word. I'll hurry right back. Why, I'll never be missed. Very well, said the elephant. Since you insist you want a vacation, go fly off and take it. I'll sit on your egg. I'll try not to break it. I'll stay and be faithful. I mean what I say. Toodaloo, sang out Maisie and fluttered away. Hmm. The first thing to do, murmured Horton, let's see. The first thing to do is to prop up this tree and make it much stronger. That has to be done before I get on it. I must weigh a ton. Then carefully, tenderly, gently, he crept up the trunk of the nest where the little egg slept. Then Horton the elephant smiled. Now that's that. And he sat, and he sat, and he sat, and he sat. And he sat all that day, and he kept the egg warm. And he sat all that night through a terrible storm. It poured, and it lightninged, it thundered, it rumbled. This isn't much fun. The poor elephant grumbled. I'd wish she'd come back, cause I'm cold and I'm wet. I hope that Maisie Bird doesn't forget. But Maisie, by this time, was far beyond reach, enjoying the sunshine way off in Palm Beach. That's in Florida for you English that don't know. And having such fun, such a wonderful rest, she decided she'd never go back to her nest cheeky bird. I don't know if you can see it, but that is her sunbathing in Florida. 
So Horton, poor Horton, kept sitting there day after day, and soon it was autumn, the leaves blew away, then came the winter, the snow and the sleet, the icicles hung from his trunk and his feet, but Horton kept sitting and said with a sneeze, I'll stay on this egg and I won't let it freeze. I meant what I said, and I said what I meant, an elephant's faithful 100%. So poor Horton sat there the whole winter through, and then came the springtime with troubles anew. His friends gathered round, and they shouted with glee, look, Horton the elephant's up in a tree. They taunted, they teased him, they yelled, how absurd. Old Horton the elephant thinks he's a bird. They laughed and they laughed. Then they all ran away and Horton was lonely. He wanted to play, but he sat on the egg and continued to say, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant, an elephant's faithful 100%. There's poor elephant off in the, Horton the elephant off in the tree over there, and his friends running away. No matter what happens, this egg must be tended, but poor Horton's troubles, uh-oh, were far from unended, from ended. For while Horton sat there, so faithful, so kind, three hunters, if you can see them, came sneaking up softly behind. He heard the men's footsteps. He turned with a start. Three rifles were aiming right at his heart. Poor Horton. Did he run? No, he did not. Horton stayed in that nest. He held his head high. He threw out his chest and he looked at the hunters as much as to say, shoot if he must, but I won't run away. I meant what I said and I said what I meant and elephants faithful 100%. But the men didn't shoot. No, much to Horton's surprise, they dropped their three guns and they start, stared with wide eyes. Look, they all shouted, can such a thing be? An elephant sitting on top of a tree? It's strange, it's amazing, it's wonderful, new. No. Don't shoot him, we'll catch him. That's just what we'll do. Let's take him alive. Why, he's terribly funny. We'll sell him back home to a circus for money. And the first thing he knew, they had built a big wagon with ropes on the front for pullers to drag on. I know it doesn't quite rhyme, but go with me. They dug up his tree. They put it inside with Horton so sad that he practically cried. We're off, the men shouted, and off they all went with Horton unhappy 100%. Up out of the jungle, up into the sky, then down, down the mountains. If you can see Horton over there. And down to the sea went the cart with the elephant, egg, nest, and tree. Then out of the wagon and on to a ship, poor Horton, out over the ocean and ooh, what a trip, rolling and tossing and splashing with the spray. And Horton said day after day after day, I meant what I said and I said what I meant, but oh, I am seasick 100%. After bobbing around, for two weeks, like a cork, they landed at last in the town of New York, again, America. All ashore, the men shouted, and down with a lurch went Horton the elephant, still on, still on his perch, tied to a board that could just scarcely hold him. Bump, Thornton landed, and then the men sold him. See them exchanging money down here. The poor elephant being picked up with a crane. Mm. sold to a circus. Then week after week, they showed him to people at 10 cents a peak. They took him to Boston, to Kalamazoo, Chicago, Weehaw Weehawken, 
and Washington too, to Dayton, Ohio, St. Paul, Minnesota, Wichita, Kansas, to Drake, North Dakota. I don't know where some of those cities are, even though I'm from America. So just go with me again. And everywhere thousands of folks flocked to see and laugh at the elephant up in a tree. Poor Horton grew sadder and the further he went, but he said as he sat on the hot noisy tent, I'm in the hot noisy tent. I meant what I said and I said what I meant. An elephant is faithful 100%. Then one day the circus show happened to reach a town way down south, not so far from Palm Beach. And dawdling along way up in the sky, who of all people should chance to fly by but that old good-for-nothing bird runaway Maisie, still on vacation and still just as lazy. And spying the flags and the tents just below, she sang out, what fun, why, I'll go to the show. And she swooped from the clouds through an open tent door. There she is up there. Good gracious, gasped Maisie. I've seen you before. Poor Horton looked up with his face white as chalk. He started to speak, but before he could talk, sorry, there's Maisie up there in case you couldn't see. I'll get a much better book if I do this again for showing on a video, but here we go. There rang out the noisiest ear splitting squeaks from the egg that he sat on for 51 weeks. A thumping, a bumping, a wild, alive scratching. My egg, shouted Horton, my egg, why it's hatching. But it's mine, screamed the bird when she heard the egg crack. The work was all done. Now she wanted it back. My egg, she sputtered, you stole it from me. Get off my nest and get out of my tree. Poor Horton back down with a sad, heavy heart. But that very instant, the egg burst apart. Look at what came out of it. And out of the pieces of red and white shell from the egg that he sat on so long and so well, Horton the elephant saw something whiz. It had ears and a tail and a trunk just like his. Let's see if you can get there. Yep. That's what came out of the egg. And people came shouting, What's all this about? They looked and they stared with their eyes popping out. Then they cheered and they cheered and they cheered more and more. They'd never seen anything like it before. My goodness, my gracious. They cheered or they shouted, my word. It's something brand new. It's an elephant bird. And it should be, it should be, it should be like that. Because Horton was faithful. He sat and he sat. He meant what he said and he said what he meant. And they sent him home happy. 100%. So this is the end with his elephant bird on his trunk coming out to all of his friends. Now, the questions I like you to think about, because while it's an amazing story, um, I was reading it to Samuel a couple times this week, and I thought to myself, you know, I can relate a bit to Horton, so I thought I'd ask you as maybe go back and listen if you can put up with me some more um to it again and ask yourself as a family what do you think horton was feeling throughout all these things different parts of the story from when Maisie insisted from when it became winter and he was frozen to being sold what do you think that horton was feeling and then the next question i'd like you to ask yourselves is how do you relate to Horton? We're in um, a time right now where we're having to stay home, where we can't go out, and we're doing it like Horton for kindness to other people. And it can get hard. We can feel all those things you just said that Horton felt. And what ways do you relate 
to Horton that that story sounded familiar to you. And then the last question I'd like you to ask, and part of why I love Dr. Seuss, like I said before, is the timelessness of the story. Um, Dr. Seuss wrote this uh, story, it came out in 1940, right before the um, U.S. went into World War II. And I could see why maybe he would feel that way. But I guess I'm wondering if what came out for Horton at the end of all this sitting of being faithful 100%, seasick 100%, to joyful 100%. What do you think your elephant bird will be? Will come out of this and life might not be the same and it'll be different and it'll be changed, but it'll hopefully be a joyous change. What do you hope your elephant bird will be when you come out of this time of self-isolating? Well, thanks for putting up with me. Leave me some reviews to let me know if you liked the message, if you want me to read more stories in my silly American accent for some of you who are not American like me. Um, what stories would you like me to read? What feedback do you have? And I hope you have a good day.